Right, so we are out yet again on a lovely, very, very lovely, very, very hot and sweaty day at Hampton Spring Fishery. And today, I've just caught a crucian on a pellet feeder. How good's that? Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to have a little chat to you. Sort of the, I felt it was the follow-on to one of the last videos that we did. We did a, um, a method feedery, swapping between a method and a pellet feeder, it's talking about why I choose which. That was up at Isaac Walton. We did a video um, back end of May, I think we did that one. And I thought it was sort of the sensible thing to move on to a similar type of fishing. But what I'm going to call, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it finesse ledgering which is a very, very popular sort of way of fishing at many, many, many fisheries up and down the country where you're using really small, nice light bombs, nice small feeders. So in today's case, we're just using a really nice little, in fact, I'll talk about kit in a bit, but really nice little bombs, really nice little small feeders for catching a bit of everything. I mean, very typical of the venue where we're at today where we've got a little chuck to an island and we're going to catch literally everything. We're going to catch some, we're going to catch some crucians, some tench, little F1s, little carp. It's all about getting bites. And I want to focus a little bit on the fishing as well. But with this one, it does go a bit kitty. And I think your kit is really important. Having everything right when you're fishing for a bit of everything, you know what I mean? Mixed species, standard um, commercial fishing in England where we're going to catch a bit of everything. Your kit's definitely got to be right for it to pretty much make sure you don't lose them. It can be a big, big issue losing lots and lots and lots of fish just because your gear can be slightly overgun. And that's what I'm going to focus on today. So I think we're about ready. What I'm going to do first, run you through the kit I'm going to choose for this and talk to you about the fishing itself and how I'm going to extract as many fish as possible from this bank. Right, so as I mentioned, I want to do some nice little delicate catching everything feeder fishing. And so the way I want to do it, I've got a lovely little line to chuck to, and I want to have a combination of uh, loose feeding some pellets to fish a bomb, but also have a homing in point that I'm going to swap about a little bit using the, the little open alloy feeders and the bomb. I'm just going to see what's going on in the peg, but we'll talk about that when we're fishing. But for this one, as I said, it needs to be the correct kit that you're using, just to make sure you don't lose them. I mean, everything needs to be balanced, nice, just decent kit so you enjoy catching your fish let's say it's losing them at the net or as soon as you hook them that can be a serious issue fishing for the size fish that we're fishing for so first thing i want to talk about i do want to go a little bit um producty with you and i want to talk about the right sort of rods for the thing because it's definitely a misconception for me that when people buy a rod 99 percent of people in this country buy a 10 foot feeder rod for the commercials and they buy a 10 foot feeder rod thinking i'm going to use it to fish a feeder in all honesty, I find that when it comes to feeder labelled rods, that the less, uh, what's the word, what's my favourite word I use all the time, versatile, um, than using necessarily the bomb rods. You know, for me, I'm a massive, massive fan in whatever range of rods I use, whether it's the top end horizon ones or the mid range and the ethos ones that I've got in today's case. I'd much rather use nine times out of ten, I'll be on a bomb rod instead, just because, if anything, they're just nicer, there's a bit less power in them. But that's what I need. I need that to my advantage for when I'm playing small fish at close quarters, when I'm not chucking big, massive feeders to the moon. I mean, a little rod for me is so much more versatile because I can still throw small method feeders, uh, pellet feeders, whatever I want to do, or bombs, of course. It's a massive bigger range than necessarily if I were to just use a feeder rod. It can be a bit too pokey for, definitely for this sort of thing, when I've got a little finesse bomb on or for them small fish with small feeders that are very prone to popping out. So definitely well worth a look. If you don't already have the lighter style of rods in your armory, I mean, it's massive. It's been talked about so many venues, White Acres, all the little venues in the Northwest. The nice little soft rods just benefit everything. They make stuff so much better and they allow you more fish. I mean, for me, utter no brainer. When combined with a soft tip, it's just lovely things to use. But that's enough, I promise now, no more waffling about kit too much other than the sexy bit other than the rigs that I'm going to use. And for today, both my rods and reels are the same, both 10 foot, both with six pound line on, no messing about. But I've set up two different things. I've set up one of our brand new finesse bombs. They're going to be out there. What are they called? They are the inline pellet bombs that we've done. And we've done them in lots of little sizes. We've done them in uh, seven and a half gram, 10 gram. I think there's another weight as well. But lovely little nice bombs that you can use for not chucking. I think it's a five gram, the other one, a really, really finesse one for, for the winter type of months. So I've got him set up in a 10 gram, nice little short hook length, six inch hook length on there of quite heavy stuff, 018. And on the end of that, I've got a size 16 MXC4. 
So it's nice, sexy, little fish bomb fishy. You'll see when I start catching a few, the fish that we catch here are amazing. It's crucians, tench, f-ons, all that sort of stuff. But as you can see, it's not a standard angry bomb setup for carp. It's something a little bit sexier. So with that inline property, bit of a bolt rig property because the bead sticks in it lovely as well. So we'll come into that when we're fishing a bit more. But that is my first setup. And the second one, which if anything, this is the one that the rod needs to be right for. When you start moving to small feeders on a bomb stroke feeder rod, having those really softer bomb, uh, softer rods, it's what makes the difference to not losing them fish. I keep feeling I'm saying the same thing all the time with losing fish, but that is definitely for me, the biggest problem when catching these little fish on a feeder. So in this case, say so all same again, 10 foot rod, six pound line, all nice. And with this one, I've got one of our, I've gone with a small to start with. I've gone with a really small, what weight we gone for a 15 gram of the tiny, tiny open aloe feeders. Cause I think I just want a little tiny bit of bait in me peg. I mean, I'd rather catch fish on a bomb today because carp, I'm gonna be loose feeding. I feel that they're easier to catch when I loose feed. But when I do swap to a feeder and I wanna create that lovely tight pile, then I'm just gonna start with a little one. I mean, I've got the bigger ones ready somewhere, unless I've chucked them back in my drawer. I've got the next size up anyway, ready to go, that I can swap that in seconds, put a bigger feeder on if I need to. We say that's again, lovely, nice and simple, six pound line, little feeder on, little diddy hook length, little three inch hook length. And again on that one, same MXC4 hook on. So it's good to go with, I think I put O18 on that as well. Yeah, something nice and robust. Nice short length of O18, that just folds back. I'm really, really a big fan of little tiny hook lengths. So two, three inch is definitely my go-to walk length all the time. And that's gonna be how we catch them fish if they're a little bit moody and also how I start my session, which I think we're about ready now to go into. Right, feeder loaded, ready to go, and I'm gonna start on a feeder. I'm gonna talk about lots and lots of things while I'm fishing, just so I'm not boring you to death without cranking any fishing. So I've chosen a nice little weird island, not a standard island that you're gonna chuck tight to, bit of a messy one, lots of, well, it's actually, that used to be about five times bigger when I used to come to this venue about 10 years ago, so now it's a much more condensed, but a bit of a snaggy one. So I'm chucking away from the island, but I've got my spot. And the first thing I wanna speak about is angle of the dangle, how we have the rod because I see too much of the old style, 90 degrees bream fishing rod set up when you're out on the bank. And it definitely does not need to be that way. So when it comes to setting me rod up, if we like that island is 12 o'clock, I'm probably chucking to nearly one o'clock, sort of, maybe just in between 12 and one. And my rod in turn is gonna be at 11 o'clock. So it's quite, a, quite an extreme, quite a tight angle, but I'm not pointing it straight at it. I've never been a fan of that. I see some chaps doing fishing a rod at a real extreme angle, almost facing it. I do like a slight bend in my tip, just to, for allowance, if anything else, a bit more cushioning. Again, where these soft rods come into it, by having it not perfectly straight, but just set to the side, that 11 o'clock, I've still got enough flex in my rod. I can still read my tip lovely, and it gives me a bit of a time to respond to a bite, because quite often I'm looking or fannying about with something else. And if that rod's gone and I've got a real tight angle, there's a good chance I'm going to snap my line, snap my hook length, something bad's going to happen. So having it the way I've got set up now is pretty much about perfect for me. And you find that the straighter you have your rod, the easier it is to sink your line, get everything in place, get fishing as quickly as possible without moving that feeder. Since if you have a big right angle in your rod, right over to the side, you've got a lot more of a bow, a lot more line to sink, it just becomes a bit messy. So have that rod, nice little tight angle where you can see it. And as I said, I've started on the feeder, so for me, starting on the feeder, by creating a lovely little bed, the fish are gonna find it easier. I mean, similar to what I said in the last video that we did with method feeders and pellet feeders. So in this case, by starting on one of the, the tiniest little open alloy feeders, so that's a fish really close here then, I'm doing exactly what I'd do if I was to start on a pole. I mean, a lovely little trap of micro pellets, six mil on top of it, you know, a fish is gonna find it if it comes into that peg. But what I am going to do very, very quickly, just as I would in many different carp fishing situations, is I want to loose feed over the top. I want to drag them fish in. And today, because I've got a feeder and a bomb set up, I can swap about between the two and see what's best. So I've got the added attraction of 
feeding these pellets over the top all the time. Something happened then. Yeah, pinging these pellets over the top to draw fish into my area. But I don't have to worry about being a single hook bait in that big area because I've got the homing in point of my feeder. So as long as them fish are willing to accept micros, I'm not catching a, a smaller stamp of fish on micros to begin with, then I'm perfectly happy having a few casts with this feeder just to hopefully get a bite a little bit quicker. I say I'll also take the risk of leaving it in a bit longer until I, uh, until I do get a bite because I don't have to worry about my feeder attracting the fish. Yeah, I'm doing that itself because it's such a small, lovely, nice, intimate chuck. I can attract fish by catting over the top, by making noise. I'm drawing fish in without having to come in and cast and introduce too much bait with a feeder when maybe that's not the right thing to do. So as opposed to having maybe one minute cast that I'd have if I was fishing at a bigger distance and I couldn't lose feed. So today I'm going to have nice, slow three or four minute casts even to begin with, just because I don't know how good it'll be and see what them fish are wanting to do. So I reckon I've got a bit of a bar in my peg because I'm seeing just at the far edge of where I'm feeding my bait. We're getting an odd tail now and again, so there's some carp coming into the peg. But what I've got to do is home them into my bait. So a bit trickier as well because I'm fishing away from an island. Oh, what am I fishing? Yeah, give me a metre. Yeah, a metre away from the island because I can't go tight, it's too snaggy. I can't get the fish homing in on that point. It's going to be spread out a little bit more. So I do think that's where the feed is going to come in, just to make it a little bit easier for these fish to find me bait. But what I'm going to do, five more seconds, I'm going to crank him in and chuck him again, because I'm also worried just what that bait's landed on. So again, because I've come to the bottom of the slope, I'm in the muck, I want to know exactly what my feed is fishing over. If I bring it in now and it's got muck all over it, then I may alter where I'm casting. Oh, here we go, we didn't need to do that. I would like on cue that one beautifully on cue. I was just going to crank him in. A perfect example, this size of fish, as to why these rods are so, so, so important. They just give you that little extra bit of softness. Because there's no worse fish in the planet at falling off than sort of F1s and carp this big. They very much like discarding that hook. We'll say that one's all hooked perfectly, but the rod as well, it's just allowed that nice little bounce and it just prevents them getting lost that rod tip. I mean a massive massive benefit when it comes to catching fish like this but that's exactly what we were hoping for a nice little quick response from the resident F1s. So same I'm going to stick with this for a little bit I'm going to keep crashing this in and just see what fish are coming to me feeder. It wouldn't surprise me that I catch F1s and different fish on a feeder Whereas because I'm giving myself that secondary option of loose feeding a few air pellets over the top, in a little while what I'll do is I'll swap to the bomb that I've got set up and it'll still be suitable for catching the small fish. I can perfectly catch them and land them because my rod's all nice. But hopefully swap into that hard pellet over the top of it might pick out a few different fishies. Because for me, carp on these type of venues definitely like a hard bait rather than the micro pellets especially when they're having to compete with little fish like this. So what I need to do with every cast is keep introducing a few of them pellets, whether I need to attract fish or not. I mean, it's never going to do any harm putting the pellets over the top. It's only going to attract new fish in, but as well, it gives them a taste as for what something I can change to, and as well, my hook bait. I mean, in this case now, I've just got the same pellets that I'm feeding. One of these six mils that'll be on is on the hook. Same again, these lovely little F1s. You've got to take your time with them, you can't just crank them. But see how that's bending, lovely, lovely and soft with a tiny fish on the end. Oh, not tiny, but... I mean, with how soft the rod is, you'd think there's a big lad on the end of this. It's not. It's going to be an F1 about a pound and a half, two, three, up. An F1 about a pound and a half. Nice and slow. So I've got my clutch as well, just set so it ticks if I really clamp down on one. Again, everything's about looking after that hook hole that's in the fish. It's so, so, so important. And just efficiency of not rushing them. I want that fish to end up in my net, not to be caught or pulled all the way back and then fall off. I want to take my time. So a lovely soft rod, bent right over. And it's not putting too much pressure on that hook to pull it out of the, the fish's mouth. That's a bit bigger. I thought that was an F1, that's a little bit larger. See again the perfect stamp and type of fish that I'm looking at catching with this sort of kit and see where he's up as well. It does not get any better than that. 
That's as perfect as it could possibly be. Let's chuck him in there. So there's whether them six mils are making a difference on that. I mean, I can visibly see a few carp in my peg. There's definitely fish mooching about, because I do think that there must be some really shallow water there. So it could be getting caught on a, a stump or a root or who knows what, but them carp are definitely actively searching out them pellets. So I'm going to have a few more casts and then I'm going to swap to a bomb just to see what's going on. So you tend to find that bomb works better and better and better once you get a big volume of fish in your peg and they are searching them pellets out when they land. That was a bigger carp again at the back. But if I were to start on a bomb straight away, then more than likely I'd find it difficult because what I mentioned at the start it is like needle in a stack. It's one pellet among who knows how many other pellets that are out there. Whereas the feeder always gives you a chance to let them home in on it. Tighten them up nice as well. But as we're talking about that, I'd, I'm a fan of just tightening up. I don't want that tip bent round too much. Not for little fish like this towards an island. I just want a very slight, I want my line to be just off the water. For me, that's about right. I mean, it's all about not moving that feeder. I want to keep that feeder in place and it could easily be a slope there when I'm chucking. So the more I tighten up to it, and if any wind gets involved, then there's a very good chance that that feeder is going to get pulled if there's too much pressure in the first place. So I so say just having it so my line's just picked up. I can still read it, I can still see what's going on. So there's far less chance of that feeder getting moved. So we can sit there now and wait for it to get towed in. Come on. So, in very typical little feeder type fashion, I've had a proper good run. I probably caught about 15 fish in that feeder, all small fish, but then my last two have been carp. They've probably been four pound carp. And I reckon my pegs definitely start to change. And you see this happen loads and loads and loads. When you're combining the two, when you're throwing a feeder and a loose feeder over the top of it, so it happens at uh, laugh at a place like that, is that them bigger fish, once they come into your peg, definitely become preoccupied by the pellets. I think it's just because they find them safer. I mean, they've probably been caught many, many times before on that little pile of micros, and they just go a little bit funny. So, because I can still see fish in my peg, I'm going to crank him in, so we're still on feeder now, I'm going to swap over to my bomb. And while it's never going to be as fast and furious, what I'm looking for now is to catch less fish, but bigger fish, and I mean, to make them trip up by thinking my pellet is just one of them pellets that are fed. The only decision I'd have to make is what pellets I put on the hook, because I, I can be a little bit subtle. I could put like a, a small eight mil on the hook that would probably slightly stand out, but then again, it won't be too blatant that they'd avoid it. But instead, for today, because I don't know what's in peg, I'm just gonna put a six mil on. I'm gonna say, I've got one of our new inline pellet bombs on, 10 gram in that case, with a little diddy six inch hook length. So I've still got that slight bomb, air bomb, bolt effect. They're gonna walk themselves, but it's all nice and subtle, because I've got a nice little sexy bomb that's not going to make too much noise it's whizzing in i've got to remember i ain't clipped this one up so i'll probably launch this straight into the island no no not too bad not way too bad i'm just gonna give that a little tiny pull to get that the bottom seems quite nice here even though i'm next to that snaggy island anywhere to the right of where i'm fishing does seem fairly clean let's just sink that line It'd be nice if one pulled it out my hand as we're going now So it definitely felt like it was happening because I'm convinced that there's a bit of a shallow bar where I'm chucking it to, especially just past on the far edge of my bait. Because I'm seeing quite a few fish, you can see some tails there now. But putting that method feeder in, they're just not finding it. I mean, whether the bottom's a bit messy, whether it's clouding up and all silty, I don't know. But I definitely feel that what it becomes a case of is that they just get preoccupied with them pellets that I've been feeding to drag the fishing in the first place. Ping that off there, all good. I can set that now and my paint now becomes one of them, one of us. 
and now later on in my session, hopefully I'm going to pick up some bigger fish. So I still with the same kit, still with really soft rod, I've not beefed anything up. But I can pick up some bigger fish now that are just eating them pellets instead of the little ravenous F1s and crucians and things like that that we've been catching with the uh, micro pellets. I just may need to be a little bit more patient for a bite. So I'm still getting indications there's loads of fish there, you can see them. I just need one to find that bait and we are away. Right, so while I'm waiting, so with a feeder, I tend to not feed as much. I'll probably feed once a cast. So with the bomb, I'm actually going to do it a little bit different because I'm not worried about the fish coming up off the bottom. And what I want to do now is try and pull as many, many fish into the peg as possible. So what I want to do is almost constantly feed, not constantly, but every minute or so, I'm just going to feed three or four pellets as accurately as possible. And that's something worth talking about as well. When it comes to picking catties, I'm definitely, definitely not going to go all producty on you, and you must use these. But our new slick catapult, and in particular this bad boy with the black elastic in there, the heavy size, it's the best catapult pretty much on the planet when it comes to feeding six mils or eight mils on that waggler line or bomb line, whatever you want to call it, and grouping them. I mean, we've done lots of videos about catties before; they are ridiculous in how these last and how well they keep everything grouped. So, without going too producty on you definitely worth a look if you haven't but anyway back to fishing bit and I'm just going to constantly oh, I thought that one had it then so I will have an odd strike at one that was sort of rattling it then as if it picked me little bomb up but hadn't hooked itself so there's a bit of muck on that as well which a bit worrying I don't want to be casting into muck so I'm going to cast a little bit further this time try and get onto that shallower bit a little bit further Yeah, I'm liking that. Let's keep everything nice and tight. So luckily today I'm not having to sink that line because it is about 3 million degrees with no wind. So my bomb's heavy enough with six pound line to sink it all itself when I tighten up. And same again, just three and four over the top all the time because the fish aren't going to come up because I reckon it's only about this deep. So I can just keep ringing that dinner bell with plop, 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 plop. Get a load of fish there. And hopefully then I'll start getting little runs on this. So with a bit of luck, there'll be then bigger fish. So I've always got the option as well. If, if it's not right, here we go. I've got the option of swapping back to the feeder. If I do feel that all of a sudden I've got lots of F1s in my peg again, or smaller fish, I can swap back to that, which actually I think this is. But still all it shows is that lovely example of little diddy fish or very small stamp fish on a bomb. Look at him, perfect. But without any fear at all of them flomping off underneath the rod tip. So he's, is he a little carp? Oh, he's a little carp, isn't he? Yes, lovely little common carps. Same again, right in the bottom, all perfect then. Exactly what we want. So what I'm going to try and do is now one more decent specimen for you. And then hopefully that'll be an ideal demonstration of the sort of things I'm looking for. I'm going to put an 8mm on this time. The sort of things I'm looking for when I am fishing these nice little, very, very typical commercials that we have all over the place. But just by paying a bit more attention to the gear that I'm using and thinking about what feeder or bomb I'm using for what reason, it just makes things a little bit better and more enjoyable more than anything else. Oh, I thought that was going on the island then. Oh, good. There's really shallow there. I'm not even feeling that hit the bottom. So it must be a very, very shallow area that must. So I'm going to carry on feeding and see if we can get one more. Well, that bomb definitely weren't the right thing. We caught a couple on it, but it was very, very noticeable. 
that we were waiting ages and ages for bikes, even though there were loads in the pack. And I honestly just don't think today it's a case of there's not many big ones in pack. I mean, I've caught a couple of three pound car, but it seems very, very much the feeder is the way to go, so, which it's always going to be. I mean, I've got a peg full of pounders. I mean, with us being sat here on our own, these little ones are very, very much taking over my peg today. But, oh, oh, that's the bestest one in the world to finish on. You can see, as I said, the perfect example catching these type of fish, which the feeder's been bang on for. Look at him. Having this sort of setup with little, light, floppy rods, you know I mean, they don't have to be the, the fanciest rods in the world. Often, the more affordable rods are the way to go when it comes to fishing for fish like this. That's the best fish in the world. But yes, so hopefully today, a little bit different, not as fast and furious and catching monsters as we were last time with meta feeders and pellet feeders. Say, for that nice little refined type of fishing that we have at so many venues up and down the country these days, that making your approach a little bit flexible, a bit more versatile, just nicer. So you have such a nice day's fishing and you can still catch pretty much everything that's swimming just with a simple bomb rod and a feed rod in your hand. So there you go, hopefully you enjoyed that one. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the Matrix YouTube channel and you get to see lots of videos from the likes of me catching lots of slippery green things like that one.